Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. Uh, I've been having a couple questions about setting up the histograms, uh, specifically on vehicles that weren't covered in my original speed density video. If you're looking for that video, the one where I go through all the steps of doing a speed density tune, I will throw a link up in the corner there. Uh, you can go ahead and jump over there. Uh, for now though, I'm going to touch on the Gen 5 and then an older Gen 4. And there's going to be kind of a crossover period between the older Gen 4s and the Gen 5s where some of the Gen 4s like the 2008, 2009s, 2010s and 11s, that kind of that region is going to use a little bit of both of this. So uh, bear with me, I'll try and kind of discuss the differences and give you some ideas. But for, for starting off here, let's go ahead and look at a 2004 Silverado. This is one that I dealt with recently specifically and this is going to kind of cover a lot of the stuff that's going on uh, for that time period. So our big thing is, is if we go into air, airflow here, we're going to have a primary VE table as opposed to a virtual volumetric table that we get in the Gen 5s. And so this primary VE table is pretty much what has been used uh, since the old 16-bit generation back way in the day whenever they first started getting into the, the smarter fuel injection, the port fuel injection, stuff like that. So this is what you're going to see on the majority of the vehicles out there until we get into the VVE stuff. And as you can see, this is a table based on engine speed being your RPM and your manifold absolute pressure, which in this case is in KPA. It's important to pay attention to the units and carry those units throughout uh, your histogram to make sure that everything ends up matching this map because we will be making adjustments directly to this map. So if we jump over to the scanner, we want to make sure that we have our RPM, which we do here, and our manifold pressure. If it's not in KPA here, it's not a big ordeal. The scanner will do the math. We just need to make sure that it is in KPA whenever we are setting up our histogram. So you can change it, just right click on it and you have the option to switch between units. So we're in KPA already. On top of it, we have our EQ ratio coming from our wideband gauge. And in this case, we've got a vehicle that does not have an EQ ratio on it. It only has an air to fuel ratio. Not a big ordeal. We can do some pretty simple math to swap this over to EQ ratio so that you can tune in Lambda or you could stick with the AFR. I would suggest going over to the Lambda. It's just easier to start learning Lambda now. Now, if you have one of these weird situations where you have an older vehicle that does not have EQ but has flex fuel, please, please hit me up in the comments below. I would love to get a tune file and a log from your vehicle so I can look at it kind of see how it works because as you see here this is got a 14.681 all the way across the board on Stoic so it's not an issue we can do math to convert this to lambda if this were set up with a flex fuel sensor uh, which you can check under flex fuel if it's enabled if that were set up that would be an issue and this next step would not necessarily apply to that it could actually mess up your fueling so that being said hit me up below if you are in that very small group you should have an EQ ratio though if you have a flex fuel enabled vehicle. I would love to find out otherwise and if so then figure out a way that we can still convert it. The math is there, there's a way of doing the math, but I want to actually see a, a, a log file to do the math. But for now, we have this perfect kind of setup here where we can go into our tools and go into our math and we're going to do some user math here. Uh, let's delete that out. Okay. So we want to first convert our AFR over to uh, Lambda, but we can't use user math as a variable within other math. So we have to tie all this together. So let's go ahead and go into our predefined math, grab our EQ ratio error math, and we're going to copy that. So highlight that, hit control C, come down to user math, and let's paste that in. So we've got that pasted in now. We've got our EQ ratio sensor here, which is our wideband. If you have to, you can come in here and change that out to your specific wideband. Uh, this one's already set up, so I'll leave it alone. Here's the issue. This 50118 doesn't exist on this vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this variable. We're going to change that from EQ ratio commanded over to AFR. So if we type AFR in, we've got our AFR ratio commanded. Make sure you're not using the low res. We want this one. So there's no special functions on there or anything. We've got this new number. Well, we need to move that one over or copy that one over there. We can easily just highlight that, put 50121 in there. Now we have it where we need it. The cool thing now is that we're going to go in, we're going to add some custom mass. So let's put some parentheses around this one. 
And then we want to take this and divide it by our 14.68. That means we need to do it over on this one also. So take that, put a bracket or a parenthesis around it, divide it by 14.68. This is doing the conversion. This is taking the commanded AFR and dividing it by our known stoichiometric, and it is now outputting a lambda. So this is done. We can save this as our AFR to EQ error ratio. And we'll go ahead and save that It's a new parameter and we're good to go. We can close this out and now we can go in and start setting up our histogram, our, our graph. So we want to add a graph, we're going to add table and we will name this one speed, actually let's just do SDEQ error. And our main parameter up here is going to be that math we just created. So let's go down into our maths. Let's go down into our user defined and AFR to EQ error ratio. It's in lambda. We want to put two decimals on there. If I didn't actually, let's double check this. Close this out real quick. Let's go back into our math and make sure that I put two decimal on our user math because I don't think I did. Yep, let's put two decimals there. We can save it again. So we always have two decimal spots on there. Sorry about that. And then we'll go back into our graph layouts. So we've got two decimals on there. We're not worried about filtering right now. Filtering gives you the option of going in and setting up things that will say, hey, if the timing is between this and this, don't log, different things like that. That's more advanced tuning. There'll be some stuff uh, later on specifically. Uh, if you're into wanting to learn about that stuff, look for the more advanced torque tuning video that's coming out later. But for now, we want to leave our view to average. We want to bump our cell hits up between 5 and 10. 5 to start out, 10 whenever we're dialing in. And then for shading, we can add some shading in there. I like to add a high value of 10 and a low value of 10. Remember, this is in percentage, so we can add some color to it. Whenever we get over 10%, we can go red and say we'll go green, just to spice it up a little bit. Now on our columns, this is going to be our engine speed. So we will find engine RPM. And then our rows on this one is in manifold pressure. So intake, manifold pressure, and it is already set to KPA. Remember whenever I said that was important, we are already set to KPA. This is the point in time that we jump back over to our editor, open our table back up, and copy over our values, our column and row value. So go column axis, copy labels, paste that into our column axis, row axis, copy labels, paste that into our row axis. And we should be good to go now. We can save that graph. And let's look. Boom, there it is. Now, as I said, whenever we go into the 2008s to 2014s, I want to say it's around 2008 whenever we started VVE, the virtual volumetric, a lot of the 2008 to 2013s probably are still using manifold air pressure as your primary uh, row uh, values. Not a problem. You can set that up basically the same way. You're just copying those over from your table. In fact, let me see if I've got a file from a vehicle from that area. There's a 2005. There we go. So this is a 2010 Chevy Camaro. As you can see, it has the VVE tables, but it is using manifold absolute pressure. So much like we set up the other ones, uh, we would go in, copy the rows and axis on these, and you know we've got all these other uh, tables here on VVE, but the rows and axis are the same. So we're applying the same changes throughout. So as I said, for this one, we would do copy columns, copy labels. We'd go in and say graph layout, Two thousand ten Camaro SD EQ. We'll go in here and add in our EQ error ratio. Same ordeal. RPMs. KPA. Uh, manifold, absolute pressure, and then if we copy our rows, put those in there. And as I said, this was a 2010 Camaro. 
Okay, so now we have a much bigger table that's based on our specific vehicle. In this case, it's the 2010 Camaro. There's no data in there because uh, this log file that we have opened here is not for a 2010 Camaro. So, but let's go ahead and close this out. So, open up a log. Okay, this one's got everything in there and then I will close this out and open up a config. 2014 Silverado, it should be the same. Okay, so this is for the Gen 5 setup. Uh, as you can see, if we go into our VVE table, we are now using a pressure ratio instead of KPA. So about everything else is gonna be the same except for this pressure ratio, which as you can see, is map divided by barometric. The big thing about that is, is there's no uh, units on this. So whenever we go in here, we have to do math. Let's do a math parameter. And we need to do a new math called pressure ratio. And if we go back over and look, it's map divided by barrow. So let's do manifold absolute pressure. Now, we can leave it in Pascal, but we're going to go ahead and change it to kilopascal in this situation. And then we need to divide that by barometric pressure. So let's add in barometric pressure. Same ordeal. It's in Pascal. We're going to change it to kilopascal. It doesn't matter as long as both of our units are in KPA down here. Add your 2% decimal place. Now you have pressure ratio. So we can save that for now. And let's uh, set up our EQ ratio. Same ordeal, we'll go in here, we could either try and use the factory EQ ratio or we can come in here and set it up based on our wide band if need be. And I'll show you that again real quick. So we'll paste that in there. Uh, we can leave the equivalence ratio command to the same, that is correct. We just need to edit that variable. And that is our externals. In my, my case, I'm using the serial port, so it would be this one. And we'll add our two decimals in there and say that this is our EQ error ratio. Okay, save it. And now we will create a, another graph. And this one will be our uh, 2014 Silverado. So we need to come in here, as you can see, we're going into our first parameter. This is our main parameter. This is the one that we use our user to find math, in this case, the EQ error ratio. Or as I said, you can try the predefined math, which is under Lambda and AFR, and use the EQ error ratio there. But I prefer to use my user-defined ones. They always work for me. So we've already got our decimal in two, decimal in two places. I'm going to name this one 2014 Silv uh, EQ. Same ordeal. We'll add our cell hits to 10. We can add colors if we wanted to. I'm not going to bother with it. Make sure I've used an average. Then on here, we will do our parameters for RPM. And where it changes here is for our row axis, we have to use that math that we set up for pressure ratio. Okay, we'll jump back over to the editor, copy our column axis labels for the RPMs, and then copy our row axis labels for the pressure ratio. Save that. And now we have one set up for a Gen 5 that uses pressure ratio. And you can see over here on the side is pressure ratio. Math user versus engine RPMs. Our 2010 Camaro is manifold pressure versus RPMs, and then, then our 2004 is manifold pressure versus RPMs, but it's a much smaller map. The reason that this is a much smaller map is that this is probably a 16-bit ECU as opposed to a 32-bit ECU, which has all this extra room. It That equals out to the amount of resolution that you can get on these tables. So that's it. Uh, I know this ran a little bit longer than I wanted to, but we kind of got three different setups knocked out to give you an idea of how to set up EQ or set up the uh, error ratio histogram. If you have any questions, make sure and hit up the comments below. Uh, as said, the big thing is to make sure that if you're using EQ or Lambda, if you're tuning the Lambda, that you're using EQ, that you have a commanded EQ from your ECU and your wideband is in EQ. If you're using AFR, make sure your wideband's in AFR and that you're using commanded AFR from the ECU. So, 
there is the option of going in there and doing the math to make AFR read as an EQ as long as you do not have a flex fuel vehicle because if you have flex fuel that is a moving target your EQ ratio should always go with a flex fuel tune. I know it's a little bit complicated hopefully I haven't muddied the waters up anymore but as I said if you have any questions hit up the uh, comments below make sure you check out the rest of the tuning series if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and drop a subscription. I'm going to have some videos coming up soon where I do some serious speed density tuning on the truck for some reasons that I'm not ready to talk about yet. There's going to be some changes coming that's going to require me to go out and do some speed density tuning. I'm basically going to go mathless here in the future. I may leave it in just for idle and, and uh, tooling around, but it's going to get to the point where the math is, is uh, going to become more of a hindrance on this setup. So... It's going to be cool. So as I said, you're not going to want to miss out. Subscribe, throw a thumbs up out there, and as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.